Guys, Chris has actually been instrumental in bringing this to life. And I know, Chris, you've had extensive experience in radio. Um, has that helped in uh, bringing this to life? Uh, massively. You get to know the kind of talent that work well in the radio space. Herbert's like this chap sitting next to me, who understand audio very, very well. Um, but for me also, it's about that, that discipline in podcasting, which I think that radio can really bring um, the, the, the structure of links, the structure of content in that kind of way. Um, it's my pet hate personally when you, you hear podcasts and it's just this waffle for 10 minutes before you get into the meat of the content. Deliver on your promise. If you're delivering a true crime podcast, get into that content. And for me, the radio talent that we work with or guys that we've worked with within that space know that discipline, know about not giving the audience discipline. to yours. <laughs> or you can just edit it really well when you're working with Johnny. I mean, I mean, edit. I mean, talk about radio and podcast working together. That Johnny, you're running from this to be a guest, actually. Uh, with Sue, no, I'm late for Sue you Perkins are late because Sue of Perkins. you. Yeah. You are late because yeah. of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, but you guys have worked together for a number of years now, obviously on radio, yeah. right through to podcasting. It must be amazing to see audio in such kind of rude health. Yeah, I think the, the, the smart, when, when you look at audio now, it's sexy again, the, the smart speakers, the programmatic, the, the dynamic ad insertion. We're in a space now where it's not a bolt on medium. We're in a space where most houses have these smart speakers. You look at the hours that most radio stations and groups have now off the back of this technology. Um, it's in an incredible space. And when you look at the growth of podcasting and the monetization and not just the audience, mm. it gives us another... Um, a string to our bow to it's, be able it's to almost, work with. It, it's almost like uh, um, going back to the dawn of television when they couldn't do pre-recorded television. It was purely a live thing. Yeah. And then suddenly they discovered they could edit it uh, and make an essence of something. Yeah. And almost a slicker, more honed, tailored product than just the live thing going out there. And they suddenly, you were getting soap operas like the Archers kind of starting. And, yeah. and, and um, I think radio is almost going through that, well, audio is almost going through that rebirth with that. Almost like the early years of television. It's been seen largely as this live thing. But it's a bit like, uh, uh, I mean, I love uh, to watch uh, a live football. Yeah. Um, and yet I, I still always go home and watch all the games on Match of the Day. Yeah. Uh, and I think in that analogy, Match of the Day is kind of like our podcast mm. uh, of football. Um, I'd much prefer to be at the live game of my own and to be able to sit there. And that's rather like a live radio experience. You know, if you listen to someone's radio show, like my radio show, I hope, uh, then, then, you know, you, you listen to the music, say you're in a car, you have a conversation, then I might say something interesting, there might be a good tune on, and you say to the person in the car, hang on a second, what does he say? Ta! Brilliant. <laughs> uh, and you, you might get something like that. Uh, and, and then, uh, uh, yet a podcast is, is a bit... And that's like the live football game. I think what podcasts are offering is, is, is the honed thing yeah. in the evening that's the edited essence, if you will, which is the match of the day. And I don't, mm. that's not a bad analogy. No, not at all. Good, no. I checked with you before and you said yeah. it was good. But what about... Well, so, Johnny. obviously, and that's, sure. as, a, as a listener, that's the case. But as a creator and a presenter, obviously, I can imagine there's a real thrill in doing live radio and kind of hundreds of thousands of Nothing people. Nothing like it. So where's the equivalent thrill in creating a podcast or presenting a podcast? Um, I guess you, I, the other day I was, I was, I was talking to, to, to Clarkson, who I've known for some time, Jeremy Clarkson, and he was just saying, he was, a, he was a guest on the show, and he was just saying, thank you so much. I listened to your podcasts for nine hours driving from France to London. Now, you can't do that with a radio show. And no radio show is going to be that interesting. I mean, I'm surprised that our podcasts were, if I'm honest with you. But, uh, <laughs> but he was able to, to almost uh, replicate the box set experience with podcasts as well. So there's that. Um, also, say if doesn't, someone doesn't like the music but likes the content around it, yeah. uh, suddenly I'm getting listeners and people mm. who, who, you know, they prefer music on another station and, and their parents or they start listening to the podcast. So it's actually the way a podcast can open you up to just your content um, to a whole different listener, yeah. um, you know, while, while, while they're, they're listening to another radio station where they're going for their music. So it's the way it can sort of work uh, alongside it. Uh, which I think is quite exciting. Yeah. Well, I find that really exciting. I, I'm getting people, like I was, I was doing the, um, I don't know, you probably all know about this last night, the Super Dog Awards. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Anthea Turner was there, it was a big one. <laughs> and, um, uh, but I was really surprised how many you know, sort of people listen to the podcast. They don't listen to the show because yeah. they're not there at that time. Yeah. Uh, and, and this isn't quite like a listen again function which is another sort of, almost a, a sort of halfway house between uh, the podcast and a show. But it was just amazing to sort of see 
you know, people sort of, I wouldn't really expect to, to, to listen to it, suddenly listen to it, they go, no, I don't like the music. I, 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 we just really enjoy it as a show, yeah. which they, they can put together as something completely different. Brilliant, thank you. Mm. Uh, and Chris, why do you think big established advertisers, as I mentioned, are now leaning into podcasts? What are they getting out of it that maybe complements what they're doing on radio? Because it's not like they're doing one or the other. They're not choosing mm. an audio medium. They're, they're doing both. I think there's a deeper understanding there. It used to frustrate me that that was just because it was audio, podcasts got lumped in the same bucket as radio. Yeah. That the passive versus the active is so prevalent now, and more and more brands and agencies understand this, and they understand that if they're, they're working with a podcast, you, you look at the, the, the kind of consumption, that 70-odd, that, that 80% listen-through rate, when someone's chosen to put you in their ears, it's a choice, it's a commitment, and, and it isn't a passing yeah. 20 minutes that you're, you're just catching, and they understand the value of that, mm. and they understand when you're working with talent who's allowed to integrate those messages into their podcasts in a very natural way, yeah. Um, I'd love to be able to play you Johnny's manscaping host read that he did, but we can't for legal reasons. <laughs> okay. um, but it's it's what allowed. Were the legal them, reasons. I'm interested. We can't go into that okay, now. Okay, fair. Um, <laughs> but but it's about allowing them us to make it content. And the more brands that, that we see coming in through the door, it's about trusting that talent to, to do that. And I think that the message is, is getting through now, and they see the benefit of that. And it works very well alongside what they're doing with radio, which we know works. Yeah. But the fact that we're getting these bigger brands not coming to us to try it, but coming back again and again and again, they're they're really appreciating the value and the difference. Yes. Yeah. It's also, I mean, both podcasts, all of this, all audio is, is eyes-free entertainment. Mm. Sometimes the thing that makes me cross is that when people, and, and a lot of the visual content we do is fantastic, but is that we're trying to compete with visual when visual actually yeah. can't compete with eyes-free entertainment. It, when people are in those situations where they literally can't look at anything, then we're going to win. Uh, and I think it's up to us to make, you know, great audio, not shit television. Yeah. Uh, it, no, no, I, I don't, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I mean, we're not going to be able to compete in the area of, t of, t of television in that way. What we can carry on doing is making great eyes free, great audio. Um, and who knows, you know, we might even go back to the, um, you're talking about sponsoring such specific content. We can go back to, um, you know, how a soap opera started. It's called a soap opera because, you know, the soap companies uh, kind of sponsored it and, and it infused the content. Mm. I mean, now if the archers say uh, the longest running uh, soap in the world was starting again, it might be sponsored by John Deere tractors. Yeah. And, and right from the start, we're going, oh, I'm Mr. Archer, that's a lovely tractor. Yeah, it's a John Deere. Let's get on with the show. Yeah. And, 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 and we'd have that. So, so you know, there, there's... there's so much potential here, as long as you know, p people uh, want entertaining and they can't uh, use their eyes on it, and we've got this, or they're, or they're, they're, they're choosing just audio, uh, then, then, then it, it's, it's, it's limitless. And Johnny, you ultimately, I guess, when we're talking about whether it's a live read on radio, or a competition mechanic, or it's a, yeah. I don't know, a minute and a half host read yeah. on podcasts, you ultimately have the final responsibility of delivering that message for right. the clients. Do you approach it in different ways, or do you have any advice for clients who are kind of doing one or the other? Is it, do they feel different to you? Um, I think really have faith in our creatives, in people that make yeah. radio is the mm. first thing. Don't think if, you've, if, if, if your, your own creative team can suddenly think audio. You know, uh, uh, there's, we've got some real craftsmen in the house who really you know, know about how to make things. Uh, and, and also not to overstretch the name in there so it is short shoehorned into content, yeah. but to make it so these people, it's because of these people you're getting this for free. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and it's that kind of quid pro quo, but it also tells them about the product. We did, we did uh, one for the, the Woodsman Whiskey, do you remember? Mm -hmm. We did the one for the Woodsman Whiskey, which, was, which involved competitions in the radio show, yeah. which actually then were in our podcast because mm -hmm. they were really entertaining. Yeah. Uh, and then because of that, they then wanted to actually shoot some good visual stuff. Yeah. We made some good television out of it as well, uh, you know, to go on the socials. But they all fed back to podcasts, <laughs> nothing further kind of visually. Yeah. You know, everything feeds back to, uh, the, you know, the woodsman uh, and what they were sponsoring in podcasts uh, and in radio. So it, it, was a, it was a really good example of them suddenly realising the potential of it and just wanting to spend more and more going in and investing more and more and realising we're really, we're really going out to young whiskey drinkers. Yeah. You know, we're the guys to really push whiskey at young people. <laughs> yeah. um, it felt, I can't tell you how tremendously yeah. rewarding that felt. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, we're pushing that it was, on. It really was, under, yeah, under yeah, yeah, yeah. Well absolutely right. We're going to try and get into the high strength lager area. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and Chris, like, what do you think a radio organisation like, like, like Global can actually bring to podcast advertisers that maybe the podcast specialists, your Spotify, your Acast, what they can't bring to it? I, th I think it's two things. It's, it's the massive reach of radio. Um, the, the tens of millions of people that listen. Um, podcasts, yes, we know they're doing very, very well. There's still a lot of headroom. There's still a lot of room to grow in this space. And I can only speak for, for, for Global and the company that I work for, but you look at the amplification that we can put in place for some of these shows. When we did a podcast with Mrs. Hinch earlier this year, it wasn't just a podcast. It was uh, interviews on Heart Breakfast. It was live reads. It was promos. It was social CRM and digital support. The, the, the brand wrapped itself yeah. around this podcast. Yeah. We had at home um, huge digital billboards. And, and, and that's something that helps bring podcast to a new audience. In podcast advertising is fantastic, but you're talking to the podcast audience. Yeah. Bringing it to that wider radio space um, is, is something that is, is very unique to radio. Yeah, and I know we're on limited time, so I just want to ask Johnny, kind of obviously have a great rage on numbers last week, a couple of mm. good podcasts on the go at the moment. Yeah. What's coming up? Um, what's, Can got, you share anything with us? We've got loads of stuff. I've got hopefully lots more stuff coming up with Chris. Mm. Um, one of the areas we'd like, I'd like to look at is um, we've got... Can we, what can we discuss, Chris? Let's not give me this away. Aliens. We can do aliens. Yes, Property. we're going to be... For instance, <laughs> I, I've for a long time wanted to interview people you know, without being too judgmental, who've been abducted by aliens. Okay. Um, I think they've been abducted by yes, aliens. Yes, exactly right. Um, <laughs> also, just, just it, it, it's, it's doing things better it, it, than they're being done at the moment. Sometimes you... It, I'll give you an example. Uh, at the moment, on, on Five Live, they've got Fighting Talk, which I, I still produce, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, the one, it's their biggest sports podcast, and uh, I still produce it and formatted that years ago. Um, but that goes on. Um, you've got the warm, which is on 11 o'clock there. You've got the warm-up on, on Talk, uh, talk Sport, uh, which I started and, and, and thought up. We've got the kickabout, yeah. and that's at 11 o'clock. Yeah. You've got 11 o'clock on, on, um, uh, on Radio X. Yeah. We've got the kickabout, which yeah. uh, Borny and I thought up, which is a knockabout sports show. And I'm quite obsessed with that time on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Uh, so I suppose the next thing I'd really like to do is... Um, I was looking at my match day programme at Chelsea the other week, and I was thinking, well, this, is, this doesn't even tell me who's playing today. So right. the next thing I'd really like to do is a program, 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 which okay. is which is <laughs> a, a match day program for every single uh, 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 club, uh, which would come out that morning when they're actually playing of something relevant, which is a, a, a sort of a morning podcast uh, for each game. That's I think going to be the next thing we're going to be. Well, one of the next things we're going to be looking at, along with uh, the alien abduction. Along with alien abduction, alien we can work the two together. Yeah. People being <laughs> abducted on the way to a game, yeah. but also say if you're watching Tottenham. <laughs> You probably wish you were abducted <laughs> yeah. um, while you're sitting there. You know. um, and I guess, I guess finally, just, just for me, Chris, I think we talked about radio and podcasts talking together. You know, radio shouldn't be fearful of podcasts, I don't think. You know, radio numbers are going up. No, they all work, they all work together. Yeah. It, it's a different listening state that you're in when you're listening to a podcast. Yeah. And I always defy people who say, oh, yeah, I listen to podcasts when I'm doing a load of other stuff. Well, no, you don't. You're not listening. Unless it's a very mundane, boring task, you're not listening. When yeah. I listen to a podcast, I can't do anything else. If I'm distracted, I go back and rewind. They mm. complement their different times, and we're seeing it's incremental hours that we get, yeah. and it isn't cannibalising our radio listening. But mm. overall, the good. I went to the, the theatre the other night, and I heard someone coming out. They were, they, were, they were sort of judging. It was the opera. And I heard someone judging it, and they were going, yeah, yeah, never mind what it looked like. They don't come out whistling the sets. Yeah. Uh, and this is something, uh, my, my, my sort of a bugbear with people being, uh, you, know, you know, the way we visually sell things. That yeah. Is what we've got is the songs, is the content, is the bit people do come out uh, whistling. And that's, mm. that's the important thing about what we do. And podcast, you, you, really, you can really go back to, to what drew people to, to audio in the first mm. place. Um, I think, I yeah. think. Yeah. Okay, well I know we're on a time schedule, so yeah, thanks very much. Off. Chris and Johnny, thanks for Thank your time. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.